Now is a good time to mention a problem that could occur when we include independent variables that are closely related to each other in a regression analysis. Let's take a look at a set of data with an additional x variable, gas consumption. That's in Butler with gas consumption. It looks like this. Gasoline consumption would be the number of gallons of gas used during the driving assignment. Now here we have three independent variables, miles, gasoline consumption, and deliveries, and the dependent variable time. So running a regression with these three independent variables gave us a, an output that is shown uh, here. Looking at the p-values of the x variables here, we see that the p-value for the gas consumption is 0.1918 that is definitely greater than 0.05. So the p-value here is too large for the gas consumption variable uh, to be significant. So it looks like there is no relationship between the gas consumption and the travel time, our y variable. Well, that's strange. You would think there is a relationship, right? The gasoline consumed should be related to the travel time. So a longer trip should consume more gas. The reason we get a large p-value here is because the gas consumption is closely related to the variable miles. More miles traveled would be related to more gas consumption. Since miles is already there in the model, adding the gas consumption variable doesn't really give us much new information. So it doesn't really help us predict the travel time any better. An x variable that should be related to the y variable sometimes end up being non-significant in a regression because of the presence of other x variables. When we have x variables that are correlated, like gasoline consumption and uh, miles, we call it multicollinearity. Here is a rule of thumb. If the absolute value of the correlation between those two x variables is higher than 0.7, then we have multicollinearity. Here, when we compute the correlation between the miles and the you know, gasoline consumption like this, we get 0 0.9571, you know, definitely higher than 0.7. So if we have a regression with multicollinearity, that is, x variables that are correlated with each other, then you should take out one of the two x variables that are related. Also, even just by looking at the p-values, uh, we could see uh, we want to remove the gasoline consumption. By removing gasoline consumption, what we mean is we will make a you know, copy of the data like this and, and delete the column for the variable that we want to get rid of and then run regression again. So miles and deliveries will be the 2x variables and then time will be the y variable. Now, this we have done already before uh, in the Butler with Deliveries example, so I'm not going to repeat it here. Here's a question. Have you noticed what kind of variables we've been dealing with in regression? Categorical or quantitative? Okay, what about the y variable? Travel time. It's a number of hours, so that's quantitative. What about the x variables? Miles traveled and the number of deliveries. Uh, yes, they are quantitative too. They represent some meaningful amounts. In general, the regression model works for quantitative variables, but it is possible to incorporate an independent x variable that is categorical. Here is a factor that is categorical. Now, sometimes in these driving assignments, the driver takes longer to complete a trip because he gets stuck on a congested highway during the rush hour. So the driving assignments that include having to drive on such a road during the rush hour tend to take longer. This factor is categorical with two categories. That is, yes, including the travel on a congested highway during the rush hour, and no, does not include traveling on a congested highway during the rush hour. What we could do is represent this categorical factor with a new type of variable called dummy variable. Here we call it variable highway. A dummy variable is a variable that takes on the value of 1 or 0 that is created to represent some category. Here, value of 1 means a yes to having to travel on a congested highway, and 0 means no. A dummy variable whose value is either 1 or 0 can be treated as a quantitative variable, so it can be included in a regression model. 
we have a new data set that includes this new variable. Running a regression with these three variables as the independent variables and time as the dependent variable gives us the output shown here and on the slide. First, let's see if all the variables are statistically significant. Uh, yes, the p-values for all three independent variables are less than or equal to 0.05. In fact, they're all equal to zero. So here is the estimated regression equation. In terms of x and y, it looks like this. And using the original names of the columns, uh, the regression equation looks like this. So having added this factor about the uh, rush hour congested highway driving, I would be curious to know how much delay uh, the driving on a congested highway adds to the trip. Now, that is, uh, how much more time does it take if you have to drive on a congested highway? Well, driving on a congested highway means the dummy variable highway will be equal to 1. So this whole term will be 0 0.9980. And not driving on a congested highway means the dummy variable highway is equal to 0. So this term, 0 0.9980 times 0, will be now 0. So if two trips require same number of miles and the same number of deliveries, and one includes the congested highway and the other doesn't, then the difference in the travel time will be 0 0.9980 hour, or about an hour. We could also remember the interpretation of the regression coefficients in general. The, the regression coefficient here represents the increase in the y variable per unit increase in the x variable. And driving on a congested highway means increase of 1 in the highway variable compared to not driving on a congested highway. So it makes sense that 0 0.9980 will be the increase in the number of hours due to the congested highway driving. The other regression coefficients can be interpreted the same way. The coefficient 0 0.0672 says that the travel time will increase by about 0 0.0672 hours per one mile increase in the distance if the other variables remain constant. That is, the deliveries and the highway remain the same. Now 0 0.0672, that's actually, if you multiply that by 60, uh, it's four minutes. So let's add that there. And the coefficient for deliveries, 0 0.6735, uh, means that the travel time will increase by 0 0.6735 hours for each additional delivery, holding constant the number of miles traveled and the highway variable. And 0 0.6735 is about 40 minutes. Now, in this regression result, the R squared, or the coefficient of determination, was 0 0.8838. So that means the regression model with these three variables together explains approximately 88.4% of the variation in the travel time in our sample. As far as making predictions, we do it the usual way by plugging in the, uh, the x variable values. Just for illustration, I copied the couple of assignments from the data, assignment 1 and assignment 7, to do some sample calculation over here. So here are the two assignments. I'm going to try plugging these values just as an illustration. For assignment 1, we plug in 100 here for the miles, 4 goes into deliveries, and 0 goes into a highway. And that gives us 9.0838, assignment 7. Plug in 75 miles, 3 deliveries, and the 1 for the highway gives us 7.7298. And we could see that the predicted y value here is pretty close to the actual data 9.3 and here as well 7.73 is pretty close to 7.4. For convenience, I could also try using the sum product function to do the same kind of calculation. So for here, uh, align the data values along the, the coefficients 
So I put a 1 here for the intercept and a 100 uh, for the miles, 4 for the deliveries and 0 for the highway. And I took the sum product of the coefficients and the variable values. That gives me the same result, 9.0838. Uh, then I copied over this formula for the new data values 1, 75, 3, and 1 here. That gives me 7.7298 that I have here.